finally, Stuart Haas Racing has filled that fourth and final Cup Series seat. How's it going, y'all? My name is Eric. Welcome to Out of the Groove. Two videos in less than 24 hours. It's just that kind of day, which is why I recommend you click that little subscribe button down below. It's fast, it's free, it's easy. We stay up to date on all things NASCAR 24 7, 365, regular season playoffs, off season, does not matter. We are here. And you can be too if you just click that subscribe button down below. But anyway, let's get to the latest NASCAR news. I want to talk about Alex Bowman and some comments he made on Sirius XM NASCAR Radio at the end of this episode, but let's begin with the big breaking news this afternoon. It's finally official. Stuart Haas Racing has signed Noah Gregson to drive the number 10 Ford in the NASCAR Cup Series in 2024. At long last, SHR has solidified their driver lineup, Josh Berry in the four, replacing Kevin Harvick, Chase Briscoe in the 14, Ryan Priest returning to the 41, now Noah Gregson in the 10, replacing Eric Almarola. Big news, great to have it out in the open. Some additional details. Drew Blickensdurfer will serve as crew chief. He's been the number 10 crew chief for the past two seasons. And according to Bob Pachris, at least no sponsorship has been announced nor will be announced today, which is something I got wrong. A couple days ago, I speculated they're waiting to sign Noah Gregson until they could solidify sponsorship. I guess this doesn't mean they haven't solidified sponsorship, but maybe they weren't ready to announce themselves publicly just yet. But nonetheless, the Noah Gregson era has has now begun at Stuart Haas Racing. I'm glad Noah Gregson is back. His results in the Xfinity Series, I believe, earned him a legitimate Cup Series opportunity. And I'm not sure what he had at Legacy Motor Club last year truly was legitimate. Remember, he signed that deal with GMS. The whole Jimmy Johnson Legacy Motor Club rebrand wasn't even on the horizon, as far as we understand. But then suddenly Seven Time walks through the door. Suddenly they're switching to Toyota, and they announced that early in the season. Any support they were getting from Chevy, gone. Social media gaff or not, there is a great chance Noah Gregson was not going to keep his seat at Legacy Motor Club regardless. Toyota was coming in. They like Eric Jones. They like John Hunter. Noah was always going to be the odd man out. The lack of awareness on social media just made Legacy Motor Club's job a bit easier. But no, Noah Gregson, absolutely worthy of a legitimate Cup Series opportunity. He won eight races in the 2022 Xfinity Series season. 13 total Xfinity wins his final three years. He may not be the youngest prospect out there, but he's still only, what, 25, maybe 26? And more than anything, he showed improvement throughout his Xfinity Series tenure. So I'm glad Noah Gregson is back. I'm glad he's back in the NASCAR Cup Series. Hopefully he can put that struggle of a rookie season behind him. Uh, recently he spoke to Matt Weaver in Sportsnot. I read you guys this quote a couple weeks ago, but I want to read it again. This was Noah talking about everything that went wrong last season. Gregson said, quote, it got to the point where why keep working my tail off and physically and emotionally wear myself out if the results were the same? I know that's not the right approach and things take time and you have to stick to the process, but I always ride the peaks and the valleys. A lot of people say you have to stay centered, but I'm an emotional guy and the highs are high and my lows are really low. I'll say it again, I appreciate the honesty from Noah Gregson, a real peek behind the curtain. The mental side of racing I've learned, especially these past couple years, is one of the most interesting elements of racing that a lot of fans just watching on TV on Sunday don't really see. And I think the mental side of racing is where Noah Gregson struggled, not only this last year with Legacy Motor Club, but even before that with Junior Motorsports, with KBM before that. I think if there ever has been a knock against Noah Gregson, it hasn't been so much that he has a big personality or that he you know, throws up after a win. The knock on Gregson has been he's not disciplined enough, whether that's physical fitness, whether that's racecraft itself. He's impatient. He's emotional, sometimes erratic. Plenty of talent and skill and speed but he wasn't able to perfectly refine it. You hear that quote about his mindset this year. So if I'm Stuart Haas Racing, I want to know what he's doing to change, what's going to be different in 2024, because, and we'll talk about this more in a moment, there's gonna be rough sledding ahead. Stuart Haas Racing is not a good team right now. Gregson's trying to rebuild his career. Stuart Haas, in many ways, is doing the same. There's another quote in that Sports Not article I want to mention. Noah Gregson talked about how he's used these past few months to develop better off the track habits. Here's what he said. Another thing I've learned the past handful of months is just trying to find balance. 
I don't know that I would use the word relaxing, but this time has allowed me a lot of time to self-reflect. It's given me the space to build better personal habits, start working with a sports psychologist. That's been good for me. Good habits, good results is something we talk about every week. That quote right there shows development to me. I, I said this a week or two ago, but if I was a potential NASCAR team owner and I heard Noah Gregson say that, that would make Noah Gregson more appealing to me. I would be more willing to hire him as a driver hearing those comments. Again, the skill, the speed has always been there. It's the discipline, the mental side of racing that I think Noah in the past has struggled with at times. It sounds like these past few months, he's taken real legitimate steps to improve himself. So I'm hoping going into 2024, we see a new and improved Noah Gregson, who now has a legitimate opportunity in the NASCAR Cup Series and will hopefully be able to make the most of it. So let's talk a little bit about expectations though, because like I mentioned, Noah Gregson is not joining a perfect situation. Yes, Stuart Haas Racing is a big team, a championship contending and winning team in the past, but they're not at that level right now. And they really haven't been for two or three years. The one driver that made SHR look relevant has retired. Outside of Harvick, the other three cars missed the playoffs this past season, including that number 10 car Gregson is taking over. In fact, I looked at the numbers. The 10 only has four top fives in the next gen era, have missed the playoffs each of the past two seasons. And that's with Drew Blickensturfer at the helm. Blickensturfer may be a solid enough crew chief. He certainly has experience, but if you just look at the numbers, his most successful season as a crew chief was his first season as a crew chief with Matt Kenseth back in 2009. Remember they won the first two races of the year? I remember, believe me. I also remember that they missed the playoffs. They missed the chase that year. So I'm not really sure if Drew Blickensturfer has it, but at least he does have experience. That accounts for something. Much of Stuart Haas Racing's success this next season will be dependent on the new Ford Mustang Dark Horse. Ford and Toyota have revealed all new race cars, all new bodies for next season, and the Ford, especially with those flared out front fenders, looks radically different than what we've seen on track in recent years. Hopefully those improvements are in fact improvements, improve the on-track performance. If so, then perhaps Stuart Haas Racing will fire off faster than they have the past couple of seasons. Gregson could reap those benefits. But even if the new Ford is better and gives Ford an advantage, Stuart Haas Racing still has to catch Penske and RFK, who outclassed them this year. You know, Stuart Haas looked off all year. The rest of Ford? I mean, RFK just had their best year in like a decade. And Penske won the championship with Blaney. So even if Ford gets better, Stuart Haas has work to do to beat their fellow Ford competitors. And Noah Gregson, as talented as he is, he's young, he's inexperienced. I don't see him being that leader. He's in no way, shape, or form going to fill the hole Kevin Harvick has left behind. It'll be tough to fill Eric Amarola's shoes, even though he hasn't been great or anything in recent years. If I'm Noah Gregson, I've got to set realistic goals next year. I think the goal should be a few top fives, you know, six to 10 top 10 finishes, try to finish inside the top 20 in points. That would be a fantastic year. If Gregson ends up 20th or better in points at the end of the regular season, I'll be floored. Well done. But more realistically, based on what we've seen the past couple of years, I expect one or two top fives, maybe three or four or five top tens from Gregson, probably a 25th place points finish. Like, I'm sorry, that's what Stuart Haas Racing outside of Kevin Harvick has been these past few years. And you know, young and experienced Noah Gregson, again, I don't see him elevating that equipment this next season. Again, that's why that second quote stuck out to me because going forward, it will not be smooth with Stuart Haas Racing. Most likely they will struggle next year, much like they have the past couple of seasons. How does a young driver who's used to contending for wins handle that. Gregson talking about building better habits, working with a sports psychologist, to me that bodes well. That tells me that he has made a change, he's taking the mental side more seriously, he's better equipped now to compete in the NASCAR Cup Series than he was a year ago. That's what I'm hoping for, that's what it sounds like, so good luck to Noah Gregson and Stuart Haas Racing. I want SHR to be good, I want the best teams to excel, I want more competition at the front of the field. Stuart Haas Racing has been missing from that conversation the past couple of seasons, I'd like to see them figure it out. Hopefully Noah is right there to be a part of it. But moving on, I wanted to mention Alex Bowman's recent comments on Sirius XM NASCAR Radio. He was on Dave Moody's show and said that he's not planning to get back behind the wheel of a winged sprint car anytime soon. I can't, I can't afford to miss more races. You know, I need to, to be in the car every week. Um, I won't be in a wing sprint car for the foreseeable future. Um, I would say when I'm done cup racing, I, 
to be honest with you, I want I would love to do the outlaw tour um, when I'm done cup racing. My job on Sundays is super important to me, and unfortunately this year uh, I was doing something for fun that greatly took away from what I do on Sundays, and I'm going to avoid that uh, going forward. The decision, it was definitely mine, um, but reinforced by uh, smarter people than me. Some context real quick to catch everyone up. Back in the spring, Alex Bowman was racing a winged sprint car when he was involved in a nasty crash, injured his back, missed three Cup Series races, and really wasn't the same afterwards. In the 10 races before the injury, Bowman had three top fives, six top tens, was leading the standings for a short bit. But in the 23 races after the injury, only one top five, four top tens not nearly as competitive. And Bowman mentions it during this interview, but that's two injuries the past two seasons. A head injury ended his 2022 early and a back injury interfered with his 2023. A head and back injury are both very serious. Those are the kinds of injuries that unfortunately can linger. I'm no doctor, obviously, and I don't want to turn this into another debate, you know, should drivers be allowed to race whatever they want during the week or should they only be allowed to race cup cars on Sunday? You know, I don't want to turn this into that kind of a debate. Really, I just want to say that I hope Alex Bowman is able to get back to 100% if he's not there already. Again, the on-track performance the second half of last season he didn't seem to be 100%, but maybe there was something else missing. Alex Bowman has a ton of potential. I just hope he's able to fully realize it. And these recent injuries are a concern. I do think it's smart of him to take a step back and just focus on Sundays, at least for the for the near future. Every team owner handles this a little bit differently. I heard Tyler Reddick on Door Bumper Clear say that he doesn't have anything in his contract preventing him from going out and racing what he wants to. You know, he communicates with Denny Hamlin, Michael Giorgio, the team about what he's doing, but there's no you know, clause preventing him from doing what he wants. You know, Chase Elliott obviously was allowed to go snowboarding the week before a race, but we also know there's drivers like Christopher Bell who is not allowed to race you know, dirt cars or anything like that. Joe Gibbs will not allow him. So it varies from driver to driver. You know, Considering Alex Bowman's recent history, I think he's making the smart decision, but it, it sucks to see. That's my only point in even covering this topic is I just hope Alex Bowman is 100% ready to go for 2024 because he started 2023 off red hot. I'd love to see him do the same thing this year and then continue that momentum into the summer, into the fall, have himself a great season, a ton of potential. I hope he's able to stay injury-free in 2024. But share your thoughts down in the comment section below. Noah Gregson to Stuart Haas Racing, it's official. Alex Bowman will be taking a step back from his sprint car racing career, at least for the foreseeable future. Although I don't know if you heard in that clip, uh, he mentions that once he's done with NASCAR, he'd like to run the full World of Outlaws tour, which would be pretty cool. Leave a like if you enjoyed. Again, if you're new to the channel and you love all things NASCAR, you're in the right place. Be sure to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any upcoming episodes. And lastly, as always, a huge thank you to my Patreon supporters as well. Busy day, whew, busy week. I'm sure I will see you all again soon. Have a wonderful rest of your day, folks.